Good afternoon and welcome back and today's is I think a really interesting session because we're going to look at the koan um, he who chooses may not cannot enter the way and, and just see what it means uh, well first of all let us start with he now as somebody suggested and as we were talking about last time you can't just have a he uh, you've got to have a she as well and they said why don't you use the word person person uh, who should use cannot enter the way yeah that would be okay you could do that I'll stick with he because it's the one I know best but in fact it's anybody who wants to become enlightened uh, now uh, Marcus Smith if, if you look up his comment from uh, what Krishnamurti said the idea of choiceless awareness choiceless awareness uh, is absolutely right he's hit the nail on the head or Krishnamurti's hit the nail on the head so let, let's go into it then start with he or person what does that mean what does it mean being a person well uh, that's an interesting one uh, should it should be a very simple one why are we making it complex because a uh, person has a cultural meaning it has a family meaning it has all sorts of different meanings and of course it has a meaning for us ourselves now uh, what we want to actually do is understand how the brain is functioning when it's giving us this internal eye this small eye well, it seems to fu uh, function like this. Uh, many of you by now will have heard of the default mode network. This is a whole lot of centers within the brain which are linked up and which come into force or into action when uh, the brain is not doing anything. So supposing I say to you, keep your mind silent, uh, you'll try and then thoughts will keep coming in and then thoughts will finally take over and that is the activity of the default mode network <coughs> now that is um, uh, really uh, very important because it looks as if this network is there to sabotage it no it's got a, a quite different role really but one of its side effects is that it in fact uh, takes us away from one of the tasks we might be wanting to do and that is in, in this case keep the mind still but it also contributes to and generates that personal feeling of I so what? you mean uh, there is no real I? <laughs> come on no, it's a feeling of I. And that feeling of I is generated amongst other things, but mainly by the default mode network. So what is an I then? An I, in this sense, is just a th set of thoughts and ideas uh, and so on, uh, which depend a large extent on your upbringing. So your I may be a really scared little eye because you've always had a rather tyrannical parents or it may be a little friendly eye because you've always been able to express yourself appropriately in your younger years so has it got any value? I paused there purposefully because you have to ask yourself does it have any value? now this koan is trying to go beyond this little I into, as Krishnamurti said, and as Marcus Smith said, Krishnamurti said, um, into choiceless awareness. So we started on the Karen, and we started on he, uh, who, or the person who chooses. Now, what is a choice? Oh, yes, what is a choice? something so simple can I please have this apple for breakfast that's a choice isn't it can I please um, go into the local town yes 
Please, I don't want to go to work today. Do you see? These are all choices we make. Who makes the choices? Well, the default mode, a lot of it. In fact, the I. And what's wrong with that? Nothing, but it leads you nowhere. If you're interested in your progress to the way. So we probably ought to start on what the way is now. The way, of course, is enlightenment. Very simple, very straightforward. What is enlightenment? Well, we, we have mentioned it several times, but i mention it again because it's so important. Enlightenment is a point when your personality, your uh, brain, uh, both, have got to a certain point and been cleaned of a whole lot of feelings and uh, really blockages which prevent you seeing the world for what it is. And so, I'm um, supposing I said to you, uh, let's go into that shop and there are some red sweets and there are some green sweets. And I say to you, which ones would you like? You can may have a sweet. And you um, say, I, either I don't want any sweets today, okay, nothing wrong with that. Um, I'll have a red one. Now, what's your choosing process? Your choosing process is, I want red because, because I like red sweets more than green sweets, because I've always had red sweets. But who's doing this choosing? We come back to the eye again. So, if we're going to choose the way, then that's a quite different matter. Because it means that this eye is coming in. As Krishna Murthy said, Murthy said, the um, choiceless awareness and what uh, uh, Mark Smith said, the choiceless awareness is the key to choice. Well, come on, how can you be choicelessly aware? Do you really think you can? Yes, you can, and it's like this. To be choicelessly aware, you have to be centered in a part of yourself which does not make choices, but in fact goes with what has to be done at that moment at that moment. Let's go back to our red sweets and our green sweets. At that moment, it may have been totally inappropriate for you to have a sweet, or it may be that you, uh, it didn't matter too much, but yet uh, the right thing for you to do was to have the red sweet. I don't know. The point is it's got to be choiceless awareness. So, you're not there in the sweet shop making a choice. You're not there outside making a choice. The choices come up because you are so aware of the moment that there is tons and tons of information in the moment which will let you make the choice. It's a really interesting concept. So you can see already it's quite a deep koan, isn't it? Because it said something about who you are, and it said something about choiceless awareness. I, I think uh, a few uh, shows ago, or a, a few talks ago, we did awareness in some depth, and you can probably look back at that. But essentially, awareness is given to us, did you hear that? Is given to us by the moment. So it is constructed for us by the moment. It's not something which um, we say uh, that we structure ourselves or anything like that. It was structured for us by the moment. So when we have choiceless awareness, we are actually right down at the very basis of the moment of perception when we see uh, uh, when awareness manifests, uh, when w awareness gives us the moment, and within the moment, of course, there is the choice. 
if um, a lion is springing choiceless awareness will say go <laughs> it means get out of its way or if you know, there's the question of the red sweet or the green sweet doesn't have the same imperative within it but choiceless awareness will in fact make the decision in the moment at that time and this is uh, the next point is so important normally uh, let us say the choiceless awareness said uh, uh, it's the red sweet for whatever reasons now now you don't take the red sweet, oh no, because the uh, default mode network throws in the eye, and the eye says, no, I like green sweets. And so you then take the green sweet. Now that is the difficulty, because that has thrown you out of your progress to enlightenment. Uh, so if you choose, if you choose by you we know what that means now this little egoic structure if that chooses then it screws up the whole moment because the moment was for the red sleep or much more important to get out of the lion's way or whatever so do you understand this because i think it, it is very important now you're going to say but i can't make uh, choiceless awareness is every day I have to make choices which are, are correct I have to make choices which are right I have to make choices which the social social situation demands all that's true all of that is packaged in the awareness of the moment it'll all be there and so you act from the moment of awareness very exciting so, he who chooses, and here we've said something about choice, cannot enter the way. So, uh, there are one or two things that cannot enter, we'll look at in a moment, and the way, what is the way? The way is enlightenment. Simple as that. It's, it's the total collapse of the egoic structures. It is, in fact, the... Um, coming right into the moment all the time uh, and when you lose the egoic structures you're no longer an individual I you're part of the whole you're part of everything you're part of everything now if you're part of everything can you choose no of course not it's what Krishnamurti said choiceless awareness because you are everything there's no part of you saying i don't want to do this i want to don't want that i i like this gosh yes i, I like that very much it, it's it's not like that if you're right down at the moment of perception uh, then it means that the choice is within the moment it's within the moment and if you try to choose any other way then you will ruin your chances um, sort of metaphorically of becoming enlightened so th that's really quite interesting so keep the concept of the week of choiceless awareness would you and um, see what that means but you'll only get the feel for it if your mind is silent and you're right in the moment choiceless awareness it's the awareness that has the stress on it and remember that the moment is given to us by awareness uh, but you'd say um, that, that's not true because awareness is a brain construct and if my brain's not working properly of course it won't uh, that may or may not be true because it depends how your brain is not working properly but let's assume you are a normal healthy individual then the moment is given to you and with it the choice so it is choiceless awareness because you don't have to do anything this little I which is only a matter of feelings and thoughts anyway it's no great big I that carries around your identity 
I mean, it carries around your identity, but it's it's all the thoughts and feelings and what's got into you at that point that makes your eye. So we're doing quite well now. So he or the person who chooses cannot enter the way. Uh, the way, as I've said, is enlightenment, and I have talked about enlightenment before, and. Uh, what you must do if you're interested in enlightenment is look look at the current interpretation of enlightenment done by Jeffrey Martin. He's uh, run courses where he says or claims that about uh, a thousand plus people now have awoken, yes, have become enlightened, yes, but the degrees to which they do it varies from person to person and he's got a whole degree format there but you can't do that if you're always choosing i want this i don't want that do you see it pulls you out of choiceless awareness you don't see what's going on so it's a very powerful koan isn't it he who chooses cannot enter the way and so all this choosing stops you from uh, becoming non-dual and the way well, as I said, the way is enlightenment, and uh, the way is uh, is rather different in conception to what we used to think of it. Um, but mainly, mainly now, because we know the lower slopes of awareness, or, or sorry, of the way, than the farther remote fields of the way, the awareness because um, uh, what Jeffrey Martin has shown is that there are many different levels or as he likes to call them islands of um, awareness, of awakening, of non-duality and in the higher ones then you can get mind which will act directly on matter. That's the sort of thing when you hear these stories about gurus passing through walls. They can do that, but at this higher level, and there's some really interesting reasons as to why that can be done. And what we all should be doing is thinking about whether choiceless awareness is what we need to strive for. Aha, did you get that? That we need to strive for? You can't there can be no strife because that is not choiceless awareness that is you deciding well I'm going to be a really cool um, uh, enlightened person well <laughs> it's a bit, bit of choosing going on there um, I've just learned a new word from my grandson which is called peng and peng apparently means things are very cool so uh, it's maybe paying to choose that you want to be enlightened but it's actually not going to happen to you um, if you choose it can't be because who's choosing then we go back to the ego again and we go back into all that story so person or he who chooses cannot enter the way you can't enter the way you can't progress on it. Uh, there was a very nice comment that somebody made which is really pointing out the old story about the woodcutter who um, was out in the wood chopping wood when he became enlightened and he then didn't change what he was doing. He went on chopping wood before enlightenment you chop wood, after enlightenment you chop wood. It doesn't make that sort of difference to you but in terms of your uh, understanding of the world and your experience of it, it it makes really a lot of difference so I I think that's the Cohen uh, explained let me know your views and um, if you want more on non-duality and so on I can do that for you 
because it's it's a really important concept that you should understand. You should understand the limitations of, of egoic choices. They're not good. Uh, for example, if you are being given a new job, should I take it, should I not take it, should I take it, should I not take it, you know the sort of thing. Uh, well, choiceless awareness will say that uh, your boss or the personnel manager said, would you like to do this job? If you were there at the moment, you'd have the answer, yes, please. Because in fact, you would, in, you would know what was the correct answer, or no thank you, or whatever was correct for you at that time. So, um, here we are. I'm going to say cheerio now. Um, and that was a very peng session, but some of you I'm sure will point out that I'm using the word wrong, wrongly. And there's trouble with a grandson who teaches you the new lingo, but it's not really for the elderly like me, it's for all the young people who know what these things mean. Anyway, thanks very much indeed, and I hope to see you next week, if possible. Uh, when we may do another koan, but I don't think so. I, th I have a feeling that we might go back on um, choiceless awareness. And here you see me making a choiceless awareness suggestion. Well, it was pretty negative, actually, because no nothing came out of that. All right. Well, see you next week. Okay, bye.